um, vitamin D3, cholecalciferol, goes to the 25, which is the stored form. This is not the biologically active form, this is the stored form. So remember, vitamin D or cholecalciferol has no, value, no use in the body whatsoever. It's an inert substance. The 25 has no use in the body at all either. It's a stored form. But it's that that they measure for your vitamin D level when you have a blood test done. It's the 25 that they measure the level of. It does not give you a clue as to whether they can go on from there and get it to the biologically active forms. There may be a blockage from there onwards. But it does give you a status of the 25 hydroxy. So you could be very high in the 25, but still not be able to use it. Okay, so it's not 100% reliable, but at least it will tell you you've got vitamin D. That's something. So remember, we then hydroxylate the 25 at the 1 position, which makes it the 125, and that's the one that modulates calcium level in the bud, and the 2425, which does everything else. So the vitamin D receptors are in all other tissues in the body, like the prostate, testes, brain, skin, breast, colon, lungs, heart, and the immune system, so pretty important. Now, if you put those two together, you get then a 124.25, uh, which is only, uh, otherwise known as the 124.25 calcitrol or calcitrol, otherwise known when realized is the activator X that Western Price talks about. And this is the hormone modulator. This is the one that actually modulates the hormones. This is the one that changes the pregnenolone into the progesterone. It activates tryptophan into making 5-hydroxytryptophan. So all the things that you learn about why vitamin D is so good for the hormones, it works on the pineal gland uh, and helps people to build up their melatonin and to sleep. So yesterday, if you remember, we talked about calcification of the pineal gland. Do you remember yesterday? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what does that, of course, is activator X, isn't it? Because it's got the K, which takes the calcium out of the pineal, out of the parotid, and I talked about the three Ps, the parotid and the prostate. So this is why the biologically active form of the D3 is the real one that we should be aiming for. Now, if we just go back here, um, this is interesting from the cholecalciferol, we've got the 1-alpha-hydroxylase enzyme that does this, and we've got the 24-hydroxylase here. So they're different hydroxylase enzymes. They're both cytochrome P450-related enzymes, which means that they're sensitive to heat, etc., in other words, to light, rather. Well, they are um, the, the family of cytochrome people, 50 enzymes. One is the 1, and one's the 24. Now, when we go on to the next one, we'll see they swap over. This one is the 24, and this one is the 1. So, what we generally find with somebody who is deficient in activator X, this substance here, is they convert to the 24, 25, all right, and on this way, but they don't activate this one. The 24 hydroxylase seems to be inhibited in them. They can't seem to get this one up and running enough, although they've had it here, the 24 25. So they can get it from here to here. Looks like the same enzyme. But when you come to here, my, most people have a block here. Therefore, they get a build up of the 125 because they're deficient in this. They strengthen to this and they weaken to this. So if you imagine you weaken to the 125, you're getting a build-up of 125, what's happening to you? You're draining calcium out of the bone to increase your blood calcium. And when your blood calcium level gets to a certain point, you start depositing it. So you're putting calcium into your tissues, into your elastic tissues, and into your synovial joints for bursitis and so on. So if you start to begin to think about it, you can see a lot of reasons why... Um, we need to be able to get to activator X. Okay? So I want to teach you now to make sure that you know how to do this um, in people because, as I was saying, that um, my father um, had a heart attack and died at 71, roughly. And but at age 58, if I remember, he got intermittent claudication, which is hardening of the artery in, in the, um, the femoral artery. His father had the same thing. His father died earlier at 58. Um, so they had symptoms of hardening of the artery. Okay? Now, genetically, that would make it wise for me to do something about it. Now, I don't have any hardening of the artery. You know, I've had my optic disc looked at, and nobody has ever commented about this hardening, because you can see hardening of the artery in the, 
in the retinal arteries. But you don't know, do you? This is the problem. You don't know for sure. But I do show to three or four capsules of vitamin K. And that makes me a bit suspicious that there might be a build-up of calcium. And that calcium could be affecting other tissues in the body, um, in the eye, when you could affect your vision. Because the eye, the optic nerve in the eye, is excitatory. Okay, it's an excitatory neurotransmitter which uses glutamate, which allows calcium to go into the nerves. That calcium then has to be pumped out, doesn't it? So you've got to pump the calcium out, otherwise the nerve hardens and goes, turns to stone. So there may be subtle things, you know, if you do muscle test 2 needing K2, there might be subtle things if you question yourself really carefully and think, yeah, how am I doing on my elastic tissues and things? Remember the arteries of the elastic tissues. And maybe it's very sensible to start, you know, seriously taking it. Because uh, you may find later on, you know, you've got too much laid down and you may not be able to do it yeah, when you think about it. Um, right, so let's have somebody who... Um, did you treat this gentleman in the end? Can I, can I borrow you? Because, yeah, because, yeah, you wanted to come up on the bench. Can I tell them a little bit about your history, or can you tell us about your history? If you come up here. Do you want to take the jersey off? What an orange jersey. <laughs> I hope he doesn't weaken to orange. <laughs> That would be a triple warm-up, wouldn't it? Okay. Do you, do you want to treat him, Jill, or shall I? <laughs> I thought you might uh, might say no. Will you lie yourself down there? Okay. So did you do the um, uh, the definitive meridian? No? No, no. No. Oh, right. Okay, down you go then. That's... <laughs> set to it. Can you give me a hand and get everything out when I call it? It'll save time there. So, starting more or less from the beginning, you pull your knee to your shoulder. Um, now, why I've chosen them, uh, can I tell them? That, yes, because all, all he said is I've had three strokes, which shocked me a bit. <laughs> um, so, a person who's had three strokes is somebody who's got problems with their vascular system, I guess. Were they hemorrhagic strokes or, or clots? Uh, yeah, yeah. TIAs. So they're a transient ischemic attack, so they're probably more likely to be uh, more cramps of the arteries rather than actually... But still, nonetheless, you don't want that to go. Do you have any other symptoms? Burnout. What? Burnout. Burnout. You're burnt out. So low energy. Low energy. Yes, okay. Anything else? Losing height? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, my arm was falling away. Your arm's falling away? Okay, so let's um, uh, go straight in. What we'll do is we'll go straight in. We'll skip the um, constitutional colors and so on. So we'll go in on there. Do what? Oh, extra systole in the heart, yes. Okay, so should we do the stack? So you give me a stack of um, ones. So this will be the quick way now. Um, the first thing perhaps for speed, okay, now we're, we've all got used, used to how doing this. Are you sort of up to speed, David, all right, on what we're doing? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so let's do the 380. So to save time, I'm going to just see if he weakens to the 380, because otherwise if, he, if I do the yin and the yang, and he's a 380 with his... With his uh, uh, coenzyme, so he's not. Okay, so give me the, the give me the yang. So this is the quick way, all right? Put on the seven yang colors. Put on the torch, hold the torch. So we're just putting those through. He doesn't weaken to the yang, therefore he must be the yin, must not he? We don't even have to test. Okay, so give me the seven yin. Short of a yin. <laughs> well, give me what you got. There are seven there. There are seven, okay. Okay, so uh, will you stay there at the moment? Uh, and let's go round on the meridian points here. So, okay, governor vessel. Uh, kidney. So these are all the yin points. Uh, lung. Anybody going to put their money on the lung? <laughs> 
heart. Now, that's worthy of some money, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's go up the top in the same spot right up there. So it should be bilateral, of course. Okay, right. So, looks as though he's definitive, therefore, is the heart. So was he destined right from the beginning to get cardiovascular problems? Yes. <laughs> so where is he? That's the next point, isn't it? Um, shall we find out where he is? So if you give me that torch again, and he should weaken on the yin. Good. See that one? <laughs> Put the flashing one on. And then the slow flashing, and then it goes back to that one. I think if you, just hold that. I think if you buy the new one, as I say, the one we had 12 of or something, uh, you should find that uh, there's a program on them, apparently, if you can find the knob, which alters the program. So let's see where he's gone. So we're just going to tune him back in and then we're away. Find out what the cause of his TIA, his weak muscle, weak muscle in the left arm he's got. So we're dying to find out what his weak muscle in his left arm would be, of course, is what muscle? Question? His subscapularis, yeah. So he'd be a great one to do an arm wrestle with, wouldn't he? Left-handed. <laughs> You're bound to win. <laughs> okay, so he's, uh, that one is in, that one on there is the uh, Governor Vessel. Ooh, high achiever. Governor Vessel is, is uh, um, uh, craving and desire. Now this is the person who wants to win at everything. So you are a winner, you know, you don't, don't particularly put up with anything else. Okay, so, right, so now what we do is, we can either use the heart one, can you get me the heart? Which is his divinity one, we're tapping back in. So you're about to lose your craving and desire, and go to love and, uh, what's the unconditional love? Is it? No, it's not. What's the heart one? Is uh, love, <coughs> love and reverence. So he's really a lovely guy, isn't he? If we can get him back into his original, but he's got stuck in his craving and desire, his addiction for something. Most of the oh, good for the work. Yeah, people like you are. Perhaps it's in here. Is it already? That's spleen. That's a yin. This is a green one, isn't it? Does that say? It's hard in this light. Oh, yeah, kidney. That yeah, must be that one. Oh, yeah. There you are. It's the one that's. So what we're going to do is just correct his uh, clock. So we're just tapping the suprachiasmatic nucleus with the heart on. Dr. Goodhart was so clever, you know, he found uh, the organ-meridian muscle relationship. It was interesting, isn't it? There was only ever one muscle related to such a big organ and such an important organ as the heart that he found it was only the um, only the uh, subscapularis. So he's in time now. <clears throat> so let's test the subscapularis. So um, a shoulder to 90 degrees over abduction, hand out flat. Push the hand now to the floor, if you will, and we'll do the horizontal fibers. Push the hand in towards the tummy. So the right one is fine. So let's now. Uh, hand flat, that's it, and towards your tummy. So the horizontal fibers are fine. Wait there, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hand to the floor. Anybody want to take him on for arm wrestling? It's fantastic. Push down. Come on, push, push. Okay, all right. Okay, so now we're away. So we go into the heart here, and what we do is we'll see what he shows up to. So first of all, cranial, if you remember, breathe in, pull. Breathe out, hold it, pull normally. Okay, so breathe normally. Eyes to the left, to the right, left, right, left, right. So that's the aerobic challenge for ATP. So we're all right there. Okay, now round and round for an infection. Round and round the other way. So I do mine always clockwise and then anti-clockwise, then I can remember. Eyes to the right and down. So we're looking for allergy or intolerance. 
eyes to the left, to the left, to the left for toxicity, uh, eyes to the right and up. It pays to sort of say it as you do it, dehydration. I think the saying of it also increases the sort of power of it a bit, doesn't it? Eyes to the left and down for structure, everything mechanically wrong. Patients like to know also what you're doing. And eyes to the left and hup, hup, and hup. What do you think is going to be the next one? <laughs> it's the last one. Hey, hup, down, hup, down. Once more, it's hypoxia. Okay, so remember hypoxia is lack of oxygen. So if you get me out the composite, so we'll go straight in and see for what we can find. The sort of aspects here with hypoxia is, is he getting it through the lungs, through the alveola, into the blood? So we've got to pass several membranes. So let's try unsaturated fatty acids. Would perhaps be the first thing I might try. So let's try unsaturated fatty acids. Um, we actually do, uh, or in our composites, me, I like to put DHA in as well, um, you know, on its own, because sometimes DHA will show, and um, if you mix it with EPA, sometimes it doesn't show, just to make sure we don't miss that, so that's okay. So now let's just go through the plan and say vitamins. So vitamins would be water-soluble vitamins. So this would be B and C, generally. No. Okay. Uh, and now give me minerals. So it could be magnesium, couldn't it? Because transient ischemic attacks are strokes, are, um, are spasms, or quit like cramps. No. Okay. So give me uh, uh, coenzymes. Pull, pull, pull. No. Okay, give me saccharides. Could be a saccharide, unlikely really, isn't it? But sometimes saccharides do show. Okay, amino acids. Um, and we'll do saturated oils. The only time saturated oils usually shows up for me is the coconut oil, um, meaning the person's got a fungus of some form, probably. Okay, so now, fat solubles is what we're left with. So vitamin A. Number of times that comes up with visual, when, you, when it comes up and you think, oh yeah, the person's wearing glasses or got visual problems, and you just don't ever think about it. Very important for the epithelial tissues in the body, uh, allergies, gene expression, but not for you. Okay, so let's do vitamin E. Okay, K2, you got K2 there? Uh, uh, yeah, D in a minute. Okay, so we'll just go around the houses a bit to save the suspense, keep the suspense up. Right, K2. Now, D. That's the smart D, isn't it? Yeah, so that's got everything in it. Okay, so he strengthens there. Now, we got to what I was hoping, that he's got D. Okay, now the next question is, is the D the actual substance, you know, is this the right thing? So let's go now into his heart. So lift the arm up and get right up under there. So go on the heart meridian, um, pop the D on, and he's strong. Now go with your other hand on the other heart meridian, the same place. Patients can usually do the same place better than you can <laughs> because they can feel exactly where it is. So he's staying bilaterally strong, so it's looking good. Okay, if you don't want to keep taking this on and off and doing that, you can just do the head turn one. Okay, instead. Okay, so now let's break the uh, the these down. So first of all, cholecalciferol, basic vitamin D. So this is nothing more than what you would make on a sunny day, if it was sunny, and you were outside between the twenty first of March to the twenty first of September. No. Yeah. So he's not D deficient, okay? So we now know that if he spent the time in the sun, he wouldn't really be that much better off, okay? So now the 25. Okay, this is the stored form. Remember, this is not biologically active, but this is what you measure to see whether he's storing it in the liver. So that doesn't strengthen, so that's irrelevant. Okay, now the 125. The 125 is the one that takes the calcium out of the bone and puts it in there. No. Okay. Now the 2425, 
which is the more, does everything else really with the receptors. Paul? No. Aren't we lucky? Okay, now the 124, 25. Okay, so 125, and we've already got the 24, 25 on him. So he is the X Factor man. <laughs> See, he strengthens to the biology. Act. So get out the X Factor. Have you got the X Factor there? Fact, activator X or something. It'll be in the Master Nutrition box. Yeah, wherever the Master Nutrition is. Okay. Okay. Right, activator X. Okay. So this is where he. Uh, See, he strengthens to activator X. He does not strengthen to D2, or K2. All right? See? That's K2. He does not strengthen to K2. Agreement? All right? Therefore, K2 is not activator X, is it? Because he strengthens to activator X, but not to K2. It can't be the same thing. Okay? It's impossible. Okay, now let's go back a step. Could you just go back onto the slides for me? So what we know is it's he strengthens here. So we've got a problem here and or here, haven't we? Okay. If we've got a defect, polymorphism, call it what you want, here, he will get a build-up of the 125, okay, which will mean that he's got a high level of that. If we've got a problem here, he'll get a high level of the 24-25, won't he? Okay. So let's see which one he's got a high level of. So strip everything off. He's in there. So let's go to the 2425 and see whether he's got a high level of that. No. So we'll now do the 125, which he weakens there. All right? So he's got a polymorphism here on this 24. This is where we're not getting it working. So he's got a build up of the 125, which means what? He's going to have high calcium. Okay, what's the calcium going to do? It's going to harden him up. Okay, so let's see if he's hardened up anywhere. Okay, so remember, I'll take everything up here. Remember the test for here. Okay, so let's pull the skin. You pull there. You do it. Okay, this is collagen, isn't it? So we're doing a tug test here. Absolutely fine. Let it go. Pull. His elastin is hardening. Okay, let me put the 125, 124, 25 on. The activator X. Okay? All right. So you've got activator X on there now. Now do the twang test. Okay, pull and let go. Pull. It's solid. Take the twenty take the activator X, twang it. Okay. Weak. Alright. Now let's do it with the K2. Okay, do the twang, pull, twang. Doesn't matter how much K2 he takes on its own. He will want to restore his twang. <laughs> He's lost his twang. <laughs> you know that? That's a di English diagnosis. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> you can eat all the KT you want, but the only thing that would do you any good otherwise is butter. You know, and lots of it. <laughs> okay. Now, you might find a lot amount of butter not very good. So, what we're going to do is we're simply going to make the K2. So we're going to make the activator X. So I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to put the 125 on. This far. 125, all right? Everybody with me? Okay. And we'll see what happens. We know he weakens this in the, from the, in the clear, because he's got a relative high amount. Now I'm going to put the K2 on. Okay. By the side, I'm going to put the K2 on. All right? Pull. It negates it. So K2 opens this pathway up, okay? That's where K2 works. It allows him to make activator X. Activator X is not K2. It needs K2 to make activator X. You see? This is the difference. This whole lot here, everything in there is in unpasteurized butter, okay? Which is what Western Price found 60, 70 years ago, okay? K2 is a vital component of the whole thing. If you haven't got the K2, you can't make this even if you've got vitamin D. But he still needs the D, because he's not getting this pathway if he's D deficient. 
So now we need two products for him. So first of all, let's do the uh, dish, the goo dish. <coughs> so we go back with your green. And we'll do him how much D he needs, right, in the way of the smart D. So do you want to squirt 10 drops in? Uh, but we've got to, hold on, we've got to have two products, haven't we? Yeah. So we've got to put the K2 on him at this stage because he needs D and K to get it to work. So I'm putting, no, very carefully, I'm putting the K2 on him and we'll put 10 drops, which is 10,000 international units. Okay, and that doesn't make the slightest whiff of difference. Take him up to 20 drops. Okay, and that doesn't make the slightest whisper. <laughs> Take him to 30. He's a man's dose now. Do you ever get out in the sun? <laughs> when, when last time did you go in the sun and take your top off? 19... Uh, <laughs> Paul, 30, he's a big... Forty. He's a forty a day man. Yeah, that's better. Okay, right. But let's now do the X. We got the D, so we now take the the vitamin K two off, all right, and get some K two capsules. Not yet. We're going to turn his head in the mouth. Okay. No, 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 no. Bring it back. You got to leave it on. Okay. You can put another goo dish on there. Oh, that's probably wet, is it? No. no. Okay. All right, you hold that glass. So 1K. Um, ooh, ooh. So he's still got the um, he's still got the acetate on because we've taken the K off, so he's gone back into weakness. Right. Two. Three. Four. Now that's a sort of fairly standard dose I found on you know, quite common, was for every 10 drops of the D, you got one K, one capsule of the K. So that was be 40 drops would have been four capsules, but you can see it's not enough. So if we, if he had a pre-blend, it would work. Now put another one on. So that's five. Six. This guy's calcifying. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> How many did they put in the pot? Uh, that was the sample pot, was it? I think I've given some away. You could <laughs> How many did you... Uh, how many did you have to do? Six, was it? Six or seven? Six. Yeah, six in there. Okay. You see, if he'd had a premix with D, he would have strengthened to the 40 of D, but he'd be hopelessly out on the K. Six seven. Seven. That's better. Okay, now he's, he's tipped up with those two, all right? Okay, so now what we do is we can do the underarm bit. So if you want to do the, we go under the arm. Okay, can you hold that because he's going to, that's it, good. Um, so he's strong and go under the other arm at the same time. So he's looking good. We could do the alternative was to just turn the head, just put these to the side. I said, turn the head right round to the left and right round to the right. That's why these goo ones are much better because they're flat, they don't wobble all over. Perfect. Okay. Now, what should happen, you hold him there. What should happen is I'm going to put my money on him winning the, <laughs> winning the arm wrestle now. Okay, can you see this? Right. Push down. Okay, now take them off. Push down. Put them on again. Let's do. Okay, let's on, let's put all four fingers on there. Now take those off. Oh. And let's see. Push down. We can do it with one hand, one finger. Okay. I think that is that. Key. That's your key as well. <laughs> okay. So that's got you now. Shall we do a scale of health? In his case, we'll do the scale of health at the end. Did you do a scale of health with? What was it? Hundred. <laughs> 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 See, he's a good jugger, isn't he? <laughs> Which one? Were you average at any one? <laughs> no, the other one. The other one. Yes, your scale of health. Right now, lying there, <laughs> your scale of health, with 100 being the best you have been in your life, calibrates at 100. <laughs> I don't think so. At 90. At 95. Or higher. 
So you might get away with 90. If you were 100 yesterday, I don't know what you had to dinner last night. <laughs> it didn't do you much good. <laughs> Indian, hard. Okay, now, epigenetic scale of health. What happened there? You didn't do it? <laughs> okay, okay, so epigenetic scale, remember, um, is the best you could be. So if all your genes were working in the way that they should be, which you can see, certainly we know identify one which isn't. For epigenetic scale of health, 100 being the best you could be, right now calibrates at 80 or higher, at 70 out of 100 or higher, at 60 or 100, at 60 or higher, at, at 50, at 55, at 50. So I think that's a more realistic figure from the story you described. So can you put the activator X components on? So with the two activator X components there, um, your epigenetic scale of health now calibrates at 60 or higher, at 80 or higher, at 100. Good. Okay. Good. You eat more cheese, more Gouda cheese. What? Yes. He eats cheese every day. So imagine if he hadn't been eating cheese every day. You know, what is it? Seven vitamin Ks. Um, and is, is it always Gouda or, or Edam? No. Yeah, Brie is good. Brie is good. Um, Dr. McCullough says that Brie is better than the other two, but he quotes Gowder and, and Edam. Um, so what about British Brie? I bet you don't buy British. Uh, <laughs> we did some wonderful Brie. <coughs> it's Somerset Brie, it's called. Yeah, wonderful. But I don't know what bacteria they use. This is the thing. They have to use the B. subtilis bacteria to make the K. Okay, so it's the bacteria that make the K. That's the important thing, not, not the cow. <laughs> so if they do a goat or a sheep, that would be fine as well, as long as it's made with the B. subtilis. The key is the B. subtilis. So for him, I would put him on that for a month. Right? Maybe bring him back and do a test on the dose in a month. So you come off everything for 24 hours at least, and then we do another dose check and see how it's <coughs> dropping down, all right? And then eventually, we would transfer him over to the B subtilis, all right? Because what he really, is, his, his real problem is he's not getting the bacteria in there to make the K, but at the moment he's, he's in a sense, he's D deficient, but if you've got, you've got some B subtilis there in the, uh, one of the old kit there, yeah. So if we, um, we're going to put on the 125, which is the, uh, so that's the one you can't convert, um, all right, which is the one that weakens you because you've got to build up. Gary, can you put it back on? So this is where we've got the, the polymorphism. So we're putting on 125, which is overloading him because he can't get... Uh, so I'm putting the B subtilis on him. And you'll see the B subtilis doesn't strengthen him, okay? But the reason for that is it's got nothing to work on. He needs a bit of cheese. <laughs> okay, so let's give him some kale. Uh, can you give me a lutein yeah. compound? A smart lutein. Smart, the, the so it should be just the test files enough. So smart lutein is 50% kale, organic kale. And kale is the highest source of vitamin K1, right? So as Jill described, K1 converts to K2 in the gut of ruminants and us if you've got the B subtilis. Okay? So now if I put on the kale in the form of smart lutein there and see what the effect of that is, you can see it negates it, okay? Now if you go um, under your arm, or no, just do, do the head turn for speed. So turn your head to that and to the right. Good, okay, and back. See, he holds very nicely with that, okay? But, you know, that's the alternative. I would rather build him up with his D and his K to give him what in pharmacy they call a loading dose for a month or two to get him up. Then we can say, well, actually, you're doing well. The D level is going down. You're getting your D in from your food and things, which is probably unlikely this time of the year. Um, and we can transfer him over to the bacteria and recolonize him. But probably, at this stage, I wouldn't bother with colonizing him until we got his D up, all right? 
So next time, if you come over, to, coming over to the November seminar, if you come over to the November seminar, I would think by then he should be ready to probably use the B. subtilis uh, as the bacteria to get the uh, uh, get the colony, and then you'll start to produce your own K down there. Vitamin A and K2. Well, I think what I looked at was you had to take the vitamin A to reduce the number of K2 uh, proteins. The vitamin D increased them and the vitamin A. So it's kind of a balancing act. Oh, oh, oh if it showed, if it muscle if tested. It, yeah, he didn't muscle test it. it. We yeah. tried A, we did E, and, and so on. We muscle tested each of those. Okay, and he didn't strengthen to any of those. Okay, so I wouldn't bring the A in at this stage. If he muscle tested away, then I would bring it in, yeah. What with these? Um, I don't know. You're meaning whether it would it would act as a cofactor to somewhere where else here? All we know at the moment is this one is working fine because he's not weakening to that. We know he strengthens that. So this is what's required. He weakens that. So we know the polymorphism is in this 24 hydroxylase, and it opens up absolutely fine with the K. Now, if it hadn't opened up with the K, then I would have had to look for something else, yeah. So I might have gone through all the cofactors. The only other thing which works, um, you know, in here somewhere is boron, which is what the, why they do it for postmenopausal, because you, postmenopausal, you just, if you don't make this hormone, then you can't make your right instance. So I don't know, I, I don't know with A in there. I've never tried <coughs> looking for A. A is a wonderful substance, you know, on its own, and is often deficient. But I don't know about its relationship with K. I know Jill was talking about with its relationship with D. Yeah, well, I think all, all the fat solubles work together. That was my point. Um, so you, you need enough of all of them. So if he were deficient in A, you would probably need A as well. But, but they also are antagonistic. If you have too high amount the, of one, yeah, it decreases yeah. the other one, doesn't it? So you have to be very careful with A. Um, you know, too much can be a problem as well. So it, it is a balance, because I notice what you said is A stimulated osteoclasts, whereas D yeah. stimulated osteoblasts. Yeah. But of course it's, it's, the, it's this one that stimulates, or this one or this one, which stimulates the osteoblast for the bone activity. Okay, the other one is just 125 is just for elevating blood calcium. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll look into that. But remember, she made a cardinal error right at the beginning. The activator X is not K2, which is what her supposition was. She, you know, she made that error. So she doesn't see what we're doing with K2, what it does. Okay. She doesn't mention anything about this type of D. You know, this D is only in journals. If you look this up, you'll find it in PubMed and all sorts of journals, but you won't find it in any textbook. It's too new. Um, and I was, you know, quite surprised when I found it by accident. And then looked it up and it said it's the most biologically active form of D. You know, and it's possible that all the other ones are just, you know, intermediate substances, which aren't the biologically active form. Because I think this one has been the hormone modulator is the one that has the vitamin D receptors, and it's what activates the vitamin D receptors. Um, so it may well be that um, you know the, the the K is a very important component. That's why with you, if you remember, you had to have the K and the D to get over your over your infection. How's it feeling today? Yeah, good. I told you, it'll be about forty eight hours in total. Tomorrow it'll be virtually gone. We got something over here. I think you know D and a K, aren't you? You were coughing away. Oh, really? <laughs> right, okay, so thank you. That's you done. Yeah. So the old P5P reaction, uh, so what? P5P? No. No, you see, he, he wanted to know about also, what was the, uh, we gave a whole list of things, didn't we, which we thought you might want to do. Yeah. Because Martin and I, we are friends because they have to pay for the school. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. But that was when you were a concept, a governor vessel man. Okay. So unless you get a person tuned back into where they should be, you won't actually ever find out what it is. So the definitive remedy for you, if you like, to get you back in your definitive meridian, the definitive problem was hypoxia, and the definitive nutrient is whatever we call it, activator X, call it whatever we want. So down the road, you know, when you show to the governor vessel and so on, you might show the P5P and zinc and magnesium and all sorts of other things, but they're adaptions. You'd be treating the adaption to the problem and not the essence of the condition itself. Don't forget your door key if you're here. Okay. Uh, so I think we talked about as the what vitamin D regulates calcium, magnesium, iron, phosphate, and zinc. Interestingly, isn't it? Zinc. And we see zinc come up a lot. Uh, but D, you see, is what helps to regulate zinc in the body. So one thing always leads to another. So let's, these are the enzymes that are stimulated by D. Tyrosine hydroxylase, um, tryptophan hydroxylase. These are the ones that make serotonin here and makes L-dopa. Cholesterol to pregnenolone, pregnenolone to progesterone nitric oxide synthase and it increases glutathione levels. So there's a lot of functions that we know, you know, with D. So that's the smart D. Uh, that's the E. We've talked, uh, you talked about E, I think, or we talked about E being the uh, best source of E was wheat germ oil, but the pistachio nut oil works really well with it, as does the sesame seed. I'll just run through a few products here that we might come across. K2, we've been talking about there, its influence on bone density, heart calcification, growth of rest specific proteins, protein rich, and improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, so, naturally produced in the gut by bacterial fermentation from K1 would be subtilis. Now, we do, um, for, oh, bye bye, all the um, coenzymes uh, now, a full range of the 20 coenzymes. So, when a polymorphism does show up, you can be sure that they're all available, and not all of them are in both forms, but this one, if they're unstable, in other words, they're not stable in a liquid, we put them only as dry powders in a capsule. So NAD, NADH are stable as liquids and powder, but NADP and NADPH, you have to make that up from the capsule. So you can do it and put it into water or swallow the capsule. CoA factors, this again is unstable as coenzyme A as a liquid, but it's very stable as dry powder. Uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate is capsules only, as is folinic. Uh, vitamin C, we've tried putting vitamin C, people say, oh, could we have a liquid vitamin C? And it blows the bottle up, it's fantastic. You have the, uh, the, the nice 100 ml Miron bottle with the uh, dropper, the rubber bung on the top. And then every day it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until <laughs> it explodes and it makes an awful mess because it oxidizes in there. Vitamin C is very unstable in water. You know, as a powder, it's fine, but it just doesn't go into mixtures. SAM is the same. SAM has a shelf life of only about a month if you purchase it, if it's that long. So we do it as a factors, which is much more stable. And the same with alpha lipoic acid. It doesn't really, it's, a, it's sort of partly fat soluble and partly water soluble. It doesn't make a nice liquid. So if we just have a general look, this is what's on your acetate there. So on your acetate that you've got, or laminate there rather, you've got the picture of how each one is made. And in your notes, then you've got the details on each one. So if you've got somebody who shows to, say, thiamine, pyrophosphate, you can say, oh yes, that's interesting. It's made from thiamine, needs ATP, which is what most of them do need, and it's magnesium dependent as a cofactor. So you can see how, how they're constructed now, the body, and each one has enzymes that do that, and that's where the polymorphism is. So if you've got a defect in the enzyme expression, you've got to take the finished product. So remember, you only really do, whenever a coenzyme shows up, it's an indication you've got a polymorphism. Okay. If a vitamin shows up, it's your deficient. Let's take uh, B6 here. So if a person strengthens to pyridoxine here, 
or B6, they are B6 deficient, right? Because they're saying, if they only strengthen to pyridoxal 5-phosphate and not to pyridoxine, then they've got a polymorphism, they can't make it. So you have to give the end product then, because no matter how much of this you give, and the cofactors, they're simply not going to make enough. They may make some, but if they didn't make any pyridoxal 5-phosphate, they would die, you know, within minutes because we use a lot of it every day, but they're not making sufficient amounts. So those are all the cofactors, and then I've done all the work for you on that, and just given you a little explanation as to the major factors that each one deals with. So we whip through those. Coenzymes. Very good to do a seminar on each one of those. Vitamin C, coenzyme Q10, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin K we talked about. So these are all important. We're still making our way through here. <coughs> West, there's Weston Price himself. He was a dentist and couldn't understand why his patients in Cleveland, Ohio, were so bad with <laughs> their teeth. This was in the 1920s, 1930s. <coughs> so dental caries is not a new thing. It's a new thing, if you like, to us with the change of the diet, but he couldn't understand why his patients were so bad with the holes in their teeth um, and the infection. So he otherwise found the Wurzen factor, otherwise known as activator X or factor, Uh, SAM. Ah, no. We've got a few favourites back. As some of you will probably remember back, we used to do a product called Adrenal Support. Uh, very popular with a lot of people. Mixture of wild yam, which supplies the ability to convert the um, progesterone up to progesterone and across to DHEA. The saw palmetto, which balances the <coughs> testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So this is very important to keep that balance with particularly the men. So it helps to preserve, you know, prostate um, integrity. Magnesium iodine helps to um, balance the different types of the estrogens, particularly the estradiol and estran. Um, so the helps the uh, estradiol to estrone ratios. High ratios of estrone and estradiol to the estriol have been shown to be implicated in cancer and prostate cancer. Uh, and another favourite was the Immune Y, uh, 600. Um, this was a product um, which contained arginine. Arginine is a vasodilator, um, but arginine goes on to make nitric oxide, which is one of the pathways of killing um, bacteria and viruses, particularly gram-negative ones. So we put vitamin C in there, some potassium, zinc, calcium to uh, alkalize it, and selenium. And why is it called immune Y600? It's because you need 600 micrograms of selenium to inhibit viral replication. That's why I formulated it. You need 600 micrograms. And 600 micrograms is fine for a short while. 600 may be considered to be quite high for months on end, but you hopefully you don't need to take immune Y for more than some days if you've got an infection. But there does seem, you know, the thing was that what probably what Anne had and a few other people have had around here um, is actually um, the adenovirus. It's come early. You know the adenovirus, it always comes at the change of the season. Usually it doesn't hit us till November. Uh, and if it doesn't get you in November or there, it comes back in March time. So it's the change of the season. As we begin to cool down, um, something happens to our immune system. And as it begins to go from winter into spring, so if it doesn't catch you now, it catches you then. Very similar often to influenza, um, but can be localized just to the sore throat. It can be localized just to the lungs and give this chronic sort of cough. Bit of a devil. Used to respond so well to astragalus. Um, wonderful. 
didn't touch it at all. So we've got a different variety or a different strain of it this time. So remember, the only thing that really hits it is the D and the K. And I think it's come early because we haven't had a very good summer. Okay, just if you think about it, people's D level is not as good as what it should be. And mostly their K is probably pretty appalling. So just think about it, you know, do the, ah, what was it Chris said? And, you know, test them for the amount of D3 and the K with that uh, 124, 25. Okay, so that's the uh, immune wire. Uh, antihistamine, season's gone a bit now. <laughs> you probably won't have hay fever around. But the smart histamine is vitamin C, which actually breaks histamine down. Hesperidin and bromelene, uh, which are natural antihistamines. And paprika and thiamine. And vitamin C stimulates the breakdown. And the other ones are natural antihistamines. Uh, wormwood combination. Um, this is again an old favourite from uh, Mrs. Kroger from the States. Um, works often better than wormwood. Wormwood works fine on its own in some people, but the combination works even better with a bit of black walnut leaf in it, quassia bark, which is really powerful, disgusting stuff that no self-respecting worm wants to be anywhere near. <coughs> Cloves, which detach the eggs, if you will, and the male fern which detaxes the scolex of cestodes. So do you want to just tell them about when Jay got his cestode, the symptoms? This is quite interesting. Oh, uh, yes, it was yeah, a while ago now, wasn't it? He, um, about a year, I think. Yeah, my little dog, my little beagle, he was really quite down. And then he started to, when he got out of his bed, he started to really arch his back. Um, and it would come on was it, after eating as well. So that made us think it was possibly parasites in the gut. So he's had quite a bit of wormwood combination and has this as a regular maintenance dose now, actually. But it, this dog was in absolute agony every time he ate, wasn't it? If he didn't eat, he wasn't too bad, but he was getting thinner and thinner. And he, he was re almost frightened to eat, and that's not like Jay, you know, you normally eat anything. Uh, but every time he ate, you could see him within minutes, he would be going into spasm, and his back literally arched. You know, the erector spiny muscle went into complete spasm there, and you thought, what the devil's going on here? Took him to eventually to the vet because you got really worried about him. And the vet examined, stuck the finger up his backside, which he wasn't very impressed about, apparently. <laughs> and so there's nothing wrong with this dog. Bring him back in a week or two and we'll have another look. And charged her 70 quid or something for the process. <laughs> it's a parasite and a dog. You know, it's the most obvious thing, isn't it? Dogs pick up parasites. You know, you hadn't wormed the dog. You know, you have to worm dogs and cats every three or four months. Now he's on a permanent worming process of wormwood every day, I think, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, because beagles go round, they, you know, they eat rubbish, and wherever they go, they're sniffing and, and eating it up. And of course, they're going up constantly, must be getting worms in there. Sometimes you've seen them, haven't you? If you're really lucky <laughs> and look for them, you see them. So don't be at all surprised. And humans are the same. You know, we think, oh, <laughs> there's something you only get when you go abroad. You know, when you mention anything about a patient, you know, you might have parasites. Oh, I haven't been abroad. Or I've gone to see my doctor about this and uh, said parasites. Well, where have you been abroad to? You know, parasites are only things that happen, you know, in the Far East or the jungle of Africa or something. But it's not. They're, they're everywhere. Artemisia annua, um, good, another member of the Artemisia family. Very good. Broad spectrum, I always call this antiparasitic, which we brought back again. Uh, most, mostly used out in the East to prevent and treat malaria. So if you're going out into a malaria area, you need to take this. Um, probably as a 100 mil tincture is better than the capsule. So they use the tincture out in the East to prevent getting it um, rather than the capsule. But if you've got it already a parasite in your gut, you might consider to test certainly for Artemisia and your capsules, particularly you know, as a broad spectrum one. Turmeric we've talked a lot about because it's a powerful antioxidant detoxifier and neurogenic stimulator. So it actually stimulates the genesis, neurogenesis of brain cells. It's a combination of organic turmeric, which has to be organic and uh, freshly ground, and organic black cumin seed. And those two together make this probably three or four times more potent than turmeric on its own. So turmeric on its own would need three or four times the amount 
and the absorption of the active ingredients in turmeric is not as good unless you add the black cumin. Some people add pepper for the same reason, pepper in extract, or um, frankincense is quite popular in there, but it's not as good as black cumin. Black cumin scores much, much better. I've tried all combinations, um, and I've come to the conclusion to say black cumin works better. So cumin, yes, cumin is very effective, and it's also cumin is yellowy orange, all right? So yellow orange, you know what it stains the rice? Those of you who went to the Indian restaurant yesterday, did you have rice? Did you have rice, yeah, turmeric rice with your Indian meal? Yes. So some people do, some people can't stand the yellow rice and things. But if it does that to the rice, you think what it does to you. If it can stain the rice, it, 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 it colours you. And that's good, because if it colours you, and it's yellow, it means it absorbs the blue light. So as long as it's fresh, if it's stale, it doesn't seem to have the same benefit. It doesn't work as well. But if it's fresh and it's organic, it'll absorb 415 nanometers, which is in the blue zone, near heading towards the violet. So it's a very powerful absorber of violet blue color which is the damaging one, perhaps, to people, particularly with the eyes and things. So when you need lutein for the eyes, or possibly zeaxanthin, turmeric is something you might consider as well, because it absorbs the blow. Okay. Uh, smart thinking oil, we've talked about before. Smart thinking oil is a, a wonderful one to make the omega-3 oils in the body. So it's cold-pressed pumpkin seed, cold-pressed rapeseed. Uh, a few people may need olive oil instead of the uh, rapeseed if they come from um, the southern parts of Europe. Uh, nitric oxide formula, this is really for sports people. So when you're going out to play a sport, you want to vasodilate, which is what nitric oxide does. Um, and so you might consider um, taking this. Uh, it's got some hawthorn, which is really strengthens up the collagen tissue, vitamin C, beetroot, um, all the things here to open up and get citrulline to get the vasodilation occurs. Don't take too much because you'll start to sweat and, uh, you know, have a hot flush. You were telling me, you do rock climbing and you said you did other things as well, didn't you? And asked me, you know, with the nitric oxide, how much does he take? I don't know. It depends on how much involvement you do with your sport, doesn't it? You know, if the sport is one very vigorous, you may need more than another time. So we muscle tested, and it's difficult without doing the sport to know how much he did, but we said probably one would be safe. Okay, if you take more than one and you get a hot flush, don't blame me. 